In the previous video, we considered the extended fin examples. So this is a specific physical problem in order to introduce the first two steps of the numerical solution procedure and to see where we need these finite difference methods. So we got a second order ordinary differential equation that we need to solve. And in this video, we're going to look at the formal basis for finite difference methods. These are based on Taylor series expansions. So I'll show you how that's utilized to get the approximations that we intuitively obtained in the previous video. So let me remind you what the Taylor series expansion looks like. So our dependent variable here is u. This u is a function of x. And what we're doing is we're looking at the solution at a point x, which is close to a point x sub i. So I want to know u at that value of x. And so it's equal to the u at the close by value, u at x sub i, plus these terms. Each term has a derivative in it, du dx, d squared u dx, d cubed u, dx cubed, and so forth, all of which are evaluated at this point. And then we have the distance from the point, the distance from x to x i, and so forth, squared, cubed. And if you include all of the terms in this expansion, you get an exact representation of the function in terms of information just at that point. It's pretty remarkable when you think about that. You can know all there is to know about an entire function, u of x, just by knowing information about derivatives at a particular point. It's pretty remarkable. Now the way we apply this is we're going to take our Taylor series, we're going to apply it at points x that are close to this point x sub i, and because they're close, we're going to be able to truncate the Taylor series. So because the terms get smaller and smaller, as the distance between these gets smaller, and as the powers increase, each term gets smaller and smaller. So eventually we can just truncate it and only include certain terms as an approximation for, in this case, a derivative. So let's just do it for the case where we have our x sub i point and a point delta x away to the right at x sub i plus 1. So taking this same Taylor series, but now where x is equal to xi plus 1. So you'll have ui plus 1. Remember, that's just shorthand for u evaluated at x sub i plus 1 is equal to ui plus the distance between the two points, which is delta x times the first derivative plus delta x squared over 2 factorial, which is 2, times the second derivative plus delta x cubed over 3 factorial, which is 6 times the third derivative, and on and on and on. Once again, if we include all infinity of the terms in the Taylor series expansion, this is an exact representation of the value of u at a point x sub i plus 1 relative to information that we know at the point x sub i. OK, now we can get our first finite difference approximation from this. Let's simply solve for du dx. That's what I want. I want an expression for an approximation for the first derivative at a particular point in the domain. So if I solve for du dx at that point, well that's just equal to ui plus 1 minus ui divided by delta x. You can see that first term. Now the next term, when I divide by delta x, the delta x squared becomes a delta x and then times the second derivative. This will look familiar from our previous video. That is a forward difference approximation for the first derivative. But you'll notice I now have all the additional terms in the Taylor series. And what we do is we recognize that each term is getting smaller because delta x is small and increasing powers of delta x will get even smaller and smaller. So the first term that's truncated, which will be this one, tells us how big the error is. We call it the truncation error for obvious reasons because we've truncated the Taylor series. So this forward difference approximation to the first derivative is order delta x accurate, we say. The 1 half, of course, is order 1. This derivative is order 1. The size of this term is determined by the size of delta x. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Now let's do a similar thing, but now let's look at the point to the left. So here's our xi, and we go to the left delta x to the point xi minus 1. Do exactly the same thing. So ui minus 1 is equal to ui. Now the difference between these is minus delta x because we're going to the left. So it's minus delta x times the first derivative plus delta x squared because the minus 1 is being squared. 
and then minus delta x cubed times the third derivative and so on. Again, if I keep all the terms, this is equivalent. So I can now solve again for this first derivative, du dx at x sub i, and I now get u sub i minus u sub i minus one over the delta x when I divide through by that. And then the next term, I have delta x squared here divided by delta x, so that's a delta x over two times the second derivative. Once again, this will look familiar. That is the backward difference approximation to the first order derivative. u at i minus u at i minus one over delta x. The first term that we truncate gives me the error, the truncation error for this approximation. And again, it's delta x. It's the same as the forward difference approximation. Now, if I take these two Taylor series, this one for ui plus one, and this one for ui minus one, and if I simply subtract them, notice what I get. I get this expression here. But now, when I solve for du dx at x sub i again, I'm gonna have ui plus one minus ui minus one, you can see that here in the numerator, divided by two delta x, see that in the denominator, and notice what happens. Here, the first term that's being truncated was delta x cubed. You divide by delta x, so you get delta x squared. So this first term that's truncated in our approximation for the first derivative, du dx, is now of order delta x squared. Again, delta x is a small number. You take a small number and square it, and it gets even smaller. And so this is second order accurate. It's delta x squared. The order of the terms that we're truncating are of the order of delta x squared. So we now have our forward, backward, and central difference approximations that we had intuitively in the previous video. But now we know the truncation error. They're expressed here in blue. And the way we read this is the big O is order of. So this is order of delta x, or we simply say order delta x. This is order delta x, and the central difference is order delta x squared. The higher the order, the better, because the more times you multiply delta x times itself, the smaller and smaller and smaller these terms, which are called the truncation or the discretization error, the smaller they get, and the better the approximation is. So indeed, as we thought intuitively, the central difference should give us a better approximation, and that is the case. It's second order accurate, as compared to first order accurate for the forward and backward differences. So you might think, well, of course, we'll just always use central differences. And we will when we can, but there will be circumstances when we can't. And so uh, now we have all three of these in our toolbox. Okay, so this first point is what we just said. The first order accurate, order delta x. Second order accurate, order delta x squared. Now we can do two things. We can go to higher order approximations for a given derivative and or we can go to higher order derivatives because we also need a second order derivative for our extended fin equation. This took care of the first derivative. What about the second derivative? So we'll do both. We'll look at higher order derivatives as well as higher order approximations for these derivatives. For example, what if I did want a forward difference approximation, but I want it to be second order accurate instead of first order accurate, then how would we do that? So let's actually look at that case first. So we want a second order accurate forward difference approximation to the first derivative. I know that's a mouthful. So first derivative, du dx, is what we want. We want an approximation for that. And we would like a forward difference approximation. We already have a first order forward difference approximation. We now want a second order accurate forward difference approximation. So how do we get that? Well, as you might guess, we, we need additional points. So if you have i, i plus one, and i plus two, they're all delta x apart, then let's write down a Taylor series for this point right here, about this point. So two delta x's away. So now the distance between them is two delta x. So then we have ui plus two is equal to ui, plus the distance between them is now two delta x times the first derivative, times two delta x squared over two factorial times the second derivative, and so on. Now let's think more carefully about what happened before and what we want to happen this time. So what happened previously is this delta x squared, when we divided by this delta x, gave us a first order, an order delta x truncation error. That first term was order delta x. 
So in order to get a higher order approximation, say this delta x cubed divided by delta x, well that would give me a second order, an order delta x squared approximation. To get that, I need to eliminate this second derivative term. Well, how can I do that? Well, if I look at my Taylor series approximation at i plus 1, that was equation 3.5, and I compare these two Taylor series, I see that if I take 4 times 3.5, the, the Taylor series for this point, and subtract off this Taylor series for xi plus 2, then we get this expression here. And it eliminates the second derivative term. And so then, when we solve for du dx, we have minus 3ui plus 4ui plus 1 minus ui plus 2 divided by our 2 delta x. And then the next term, the first term that's truncated, here's delta x cubed divided by delta x, and that gives us delta x squared. So we now have a second order accurate forward difference approximation to the first derivative. Now notice this forward difference because it's the point, the first point to the right, and another point to the right. So it's the point here plus the next two points to the right. So it's a forward difference approximation. Now let's think about that second order derivative. So d squared u dx squared that we have in our extended fin equation. Can I get a second order approximation for that? So I want a second order accurate central difference approximation to the second derivative. Well, if I go back and look at my Taylor series, if I look at the first two, the ones for i plus 1 and i minus 1, and if I simply add them together, just add them together, and you'll notice it eliminates the first derivative term, the du dx term, and I get the first derivative being second order. So now when I solve for that, d squared u dx squared, so I have ui plus 1 plus ui minus 1 minus 2 ui divided by delta x squared. So ui plus 1 minus 2 ui plus ui minus 1 over delta x squared. Then this is a delta x to the 4. When we divide by delta x squared, that gives me a delta x squared. So the first term that's truncated is second order. So we have a second order accurate central difference approximation because it involves ui plus 1, ui, and ui minus 1. And that gives us an approximation for the second derivative. So I have a second order accurate central difference approximation for the first derivative and a second order accurate central difference approximation for the second derivative. And those are actually the two that we're going to use in the next video to approximate the extended fin equation. Now when you have an approximation that only involves the point itself, i, and points to the right and to the left, we call that compact. And we'll use the same term if it's only a point above and a point below. So when, when we have the unknown itself and points to the right, points to the left, above and below, then that we will call a compact finite difference approximation. And the reason why we like compact finite difference approximations is because they give us very nice forms of the system of linear algebraic equations. The matrix problem that we need to solve will, will be tridiagonal, as we'll see. And it has some really nice properties and we can develop a really efficient method for solving them. Now one thing that you'll notice is that in order to get a higher order approximation, I need to incorporate more points. When we went from the first order accurate forward difference approximation for the first derivative to the second order accurate forward difference approximation to the first derivative, we needed to include another point. So u, ui plus 1, and ui plus 2. And that's typical. In order to increase the accuracy, we need to include more points. So you can imagine very quickly, as I go to higher order accuracy, I need to incorporate more points. The Taylor series approach, as I've outlined it here, becomes a little more tedious. I need to figure out how much of one and another and another to subtract and add together to get the combinations, to get the approximations that we want. So there is an alternative approach. And basically it involves choosing the finite difference stencil. So you choose the points that you want to include in your approximation. And then it's essentially an optimization problem. You determine the finite difference approximation that, that gives you the smallest truncation error, the highest order truncation error, order delta x cubed, delta x to the third, delta x to the four, that you can get for those given problems. So for simpler cases, I recommend the approach that I've used already in this video. 
And for more complicated situations, I would recommend the approach that's given here. I'm not going to go over it in, in this video. It's in the book. And if you pause at the appropriate spots, you can see how this is done using this alternative technique. And what you'll end up with is things like this. So you can see these involve more points. They each involve five points. So this is a five point stencil. Involves I minus two, I minus one, I, I plus one, and I plus two. So five points in your finite difference stencil. And we're getting the best approximation possible given those five points for the first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and fourth derivative. So if you go through this alternative approach, this is what you'll get. So for the first derivative, with five point stencil, you get one of the ui minus twos, minus eight of the ui minus ones, plus eight of the ui plus ones, and minus one of the ui plus twos, over 12 delta x. That is a central difference approximation. It's, it's symmetric about the point x sub i, and you'll notice it's fourth order accurate. So in order to get a fourth order rather than second order accurate central difference approximation of the first derivative, I need to include two additional points to the left and the right. For the second derivative, I get this mess right here. That's also fourth order. For the third derivative, I get this, which is only second order. For the fourth derivative, I get this, and it's only second order as well. So using this basic approach, we can get all kinds of different combinations of forward differences, backward differences, central differences, skewed differences that involve, say, one point to the right and three points to the left, all different combinations, and we get finite difference approximations. There's tables and books. You don't necessarily have to derive these yourself. And then we have a library of approximations, finite difference approximations, that we can then use to apply to our given governing differential equation to accomplish this step three to turn it from a continuous differential equation into a system of linear algebraic equations. We'll do that in the next video for the extended fin problem that I introduced in the previous video.